If you've watched baseball over the past few years, you're probably familiar with the name Aristides Aquino, aka The Punisher. As a member of the Cincinnati Reds, he burst onto the scene in August 2019 and pulverized his opponents, becoming the first hitter in Major League Baseball history to hit 10 home runs in his first 16 career games. He would go on to set the National League rookie record for home runs in a month with 14, and he finished the year with 19 bombs and an 891 OPS. However, beneath the surface of his monster debut, Aquino had some glaring holes in his game. Most notably, the Dominican struck out at a very high clip and didn't sport a strong walk rate to offset it. And as pitchers adopted to his unorthodox, all-or-nothing approach and learned to exploit his weaknesses, Aquino's production fell off a cliff. Perhaps ironically, it was the arrival of former Cebu Lions star Shogo Akiyama that reduced Aquino's playing time in the pandemic-shortened 2020 season. For more on Aquino's fall from grace, check out Jolly Olive's video, but long story short, Aquino never returned to his top form that he displayed in the first few months of his career, as he only hit 22 home runs with a 647 OPS from 2020 to 2022. And in November 2022, Aquino was designated for assignment and released by Cincinnati. Despite all of Aquino's shortcomings though, his raw talent is undeniable. There are few humans on this planet that can hit a baseball at almost 120 miles per hour and also throw a baseball 100 miles per hour. His stat cast percentiles are still excellent, and he's a very good defender too. So I identified Aquino as one of my intriguing MPB targets under the age of 30 early this offseason. And lo and behold, later that month, the Chunichi Dragons swooped in and signed him to a one-year contract worth $1.2 million. And this was a bit of a surprise because Chunichi isn't known to spend much money, and they had just signed Zolio Almonte and Orlando Caliste the week before. MPB teams can only have four foreigners on the top team at once. They let catcher Ariel Martinez go, but veteran first baseman Diane Vichiedo and star relievers Rydal Martinez and Yario Rodriguez already take up three of those four spots. So Aquino, Almonte, Caliste, as well as youngsters Guillermo Garcia and Pedro Revilla will have to fight for that last spot. Now the fan reception to Aquino's move was to be expected, MLB fans mindlessly equating him to Barry Bonds, the usual response when a big power hitter crosses the Pacific, despite only a small handful of foreign sluggers ever having Hall of Fame level success in Japan, and also MPB fans thinking that he's the new Vladimir Valentin one of the few guys that actually did break records in Japan. So needless to say, the expectations are very high for the Punisher in 2023. But will Aquino actually live up to the hype? Well, the Dragons find themselves in a very interesting predicament. They're in the midst of a decade-long playoff drought, as I talked about in my video about Chunichi earlier this year. And they finished dead last in the Central League again in 2022. It probably goes without saying, but their rebuild has not gone as planned. So franchise legend Kazuyoshi Tasunami was brought in as the team's fifth manager in just nine years to hopefully provide a fresh new mindset and really change the culture of this struggling franchise. And Tasunami has made it abundantly clear that he will make a difference, for better or for worse. He is a very strict and traditional manager, requiring all players to shave their beard and cut their long hair. And in August, he even exiled starting catcher Takia Kinoshita to the farm team just because he didn't like his pitch calling. He's really a stark contrast from new Nippon Ham Fighters manager Tsuyoshi Shinjo, who favors a fun, loose atmosphere around a rebuilding team. And in many ways, it really exemplifies this clash between the old guard and the new blood in Japanese baseball. But don't mistake Tatsunami's traditional style for a reluctance to change. Quite the opposite, Tatsunami is trying to change this team in a dramatic way. Earlier this year, the Dragons converted 2018 first round pick Akira Neo from a position player to a pitcher. Now his hitting wasn't coming along very well, but he was a top prospect that could play in multiple positions, and it just seems like a bit of a waste. And this offseason, the Dragons have already made two major trades swapping second baseman Toshiki Abe for pitcher Hideaki Wakui, and trading shortstop Yota Kyoda for pitcher Yoshiki Tsunada. Both Abe and Kyoda have been mainstays on the top team for the past half decade or so, but Tasunami drafted heavy on infielders this year and wants to completely rebuild that middle infield. Still, the trades are 
questionable to say the least. Even as a bottom dwelling team, the Dragons pitching these past few years has been excellent, led by Yudai Ono, Shinosuke Ogasawara, Hiroto Takahashi, and Yuya Yanagi in the rotation. Their hitting, on the other hand, has been well under par for the better part of a decade. And in 2022, they only hit 62 home runs as a team. Munetaka Murakami of the Yakult Swallows hit 56 all by himself. Now part of that is because they play at the Nagoya Dome, one of the biggest pitchers parks in MPB, but it's also because they don't have any power hitters. So this idea that the Dragons have depth in their infield now is a bit of an illusion. Abe was the team's top hitter last year among domestic players, with a 119 weighted runs created plus. Was he really expendable? And even if he was, why did the Dragons reach out to the Rakuten Eagles for a 36-year-old starting pitcher well past his prime with 2,500 career innings on his arm? Why not trade for some prospects instead? And the same goes for Kyoda. Sure, his development stagnated after winning the Rookie of the Year award in 2017, so he probably didn't have much of a future on this team, but can they really rely on 20-year-old Ryukyu Tsuchida to be the shortstop of the future? Maybe. But it's awfully risky when the organization hasn't proven that it can reliably develop quality hitters in some time. Having said that, the Dragons do have the makings of a nice young core now. 20-year-old outfielder Yuki Okabayashi was selected to the Central League Best 9 team this year, and he has something to offer for both the traditionalists and the more analytically minded people. He was tied for the league lead in hits with 161 and second with 24 stolen bases. And despite having no power whatsoever, he was second in the league in wins above replacement with 6.8 thanks to superb base running and defense. 2019 first round pick Takaya Ishikawa played just 37 games, but the 21 year old had a 111 WRC plus before going down with an injury. And 2020 first round pick Hiroto Takahashi had a phenomenal age 19 season, finishing 4th in the rookie of the year vote after showing off his electric stuff with a 2.47 ERA and 29% K rate across 19 starts. And then there are 2021 first and second round picks Kenta Bright and Kosuke Ukkai, both with high power ceilings, as well as the aforementioned 2020 third round selection Ryukyu Tsuchida. If all these players keep growing, the Dragons will look a lot better in the coming years. So this is what I'm calling the Dragons Gambit. Tatsunami is taking a huge risk by getting rid of players like Martinez, Abe, and Kyoda, who maybe aren't fantastic but they're pretty reliable, in order to open the door for the new guard. If Ishikawa, Bright, and Ukkai can hit double digit homers, Oshima, Okabayashi, and Vichiedo can get on base and keep up their steady production, and then Akino breaks through and hits 25 plus bombs, then Tatsunami may successfully transform this team from a perennial punching bag to a championship contender as long as that elite pitching holds up. But that's a lot easier said than done. I believe in Ishikawa, but he's injury prone, and I need to see a lot more from Bright and Ukai to buy in. And I do love Okabayashi's well-rounded game, but father time is going to catch up to the likes of Oshima and Vichiedo pretty soon. And Akino may have a high ceiling, but he also has an equally low floor, especially with his struggles against breaking balls. Japanese pitching can eat him up if he isn't disciplined. So with every potential upside, I see quite a few downsides too. And if the positives don't outweigh the negatives, well, then Tatsunami's project will come crashing down. I'm personally not very optimistic about this team, but hey, I respect Tatsunami for trying something new. Alright, so let me know what you think about the Dragon's Gambit in the comments below. And special thanks to my patrons, Chris J, Jonathan Greenberg, Hinosato Yaku, Poker Pack Rat, Corgi Racing, Anthony Pang, Jake Royce, Yua Bird, Ryan Fox, Jeff W, Char Aznable, Juan Jose Sanchez Bracamontes, Christopher Woods, Samantha Garavay, Yuki Samarine, Kud, Jem Morelos, Gabriel Foss, Kurt Berglund, J1, Tom Musa, Mike Braun, Stu22, Alex Irish, Marty Mercury, PB Cow 98, Tokyo Kyojin Fan, Dave Hackerson, Brainlet Wojak, Riku, Joe Hironaka, and Joey Mellows. If you'd like to become a patron yourself, please check out patreon.com slash baseballcosmo. Also give me a follow over on Twitter at baseballcosmo. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more MPB content in English.